you back with the lawn engineer. I've got some things growing in places I don't want things to grow. It's been extremely hot. Um, let's see this gravel area. I've got, I've been neglecting it and uh, I've got a lot of plants in there. Also around this retaining wall, over in here I've got some some plants in this wall. So I'm gonna mix up some glyphosate, uh, better known as Roundup, and I'm gonna spray this stuff to, to kill it. We got rain possibly coming tonight, which we desperately need, um, but it's but it's like 90 degrees out, so I'm, it's a good time to get this on. Um, when it's hot, that plant really sucks this stuff up, and, and the bottle says rainproof in 30 minutes. I, I wouldn't put it on if it's gonna rain in 30 minutes, but a couple hours away, hopefully. So we should be good to go with that today. It is a product um, that a lot of people are scared to use. And while it deserves respect, it's pretty easy to use and, and it's, you can't screw it up too bad. So um, I'll show you how I do it. So here I'm by my hose, I've got everything I need. I've got my Roundup Concentrate. Again, this um, is often referred to as Roundup because they had the patent on this product and it expired maybe five years ago so there's all sorts of generic uh, brands on the market now glyphosate they'll all be some sort of a weed and grass killer or brush killer it's basically just a more concentrated form of this um, for personal safety i don't recommend getting this on your skin and if you're going to be spraying large areas with a high-end sprayer with nice fancy uh, spray nozzles that really atomize this in the air, I would recommend uh, a respirator so you're not breathing in. But um, that's just me. Everybody's got to make their own decision on that. Um, but this is the product you hear the ads on TV about if, if you've been exposed to Roundup and have cancer. Um, now call us the lawyer thing. Um, so it does deserve respect. Um, from a health perspective, so I've got my rubber boots on here, so I'm not getting it on my feet I'm gonna put some gloves on before I open this up and mix it But the other thing I just have my cheap lawn and garden sprayer here and then uh, the The roundup comes with this nice measuring cup here so we can measure out our thing and I've got the hose for water Okay, I'm gonna start by putting uh, a little bit of water in my uh, sprayer here just so uh, we've got something to pour the roundup into i would recommend not doing this on your lawn because if any of it gets on your lawn it will absolutely decimate it in that area so i'm on just my landscape rocks here where there's no plants i'm gonna mix up a gallon and a half of this So, of course they don't make this easy. Um, it's buried in this label here. Of course they don't make this easy. It's buried in this label. Um, you need basically for a tank sprayer. Here, it's on page one. Tank sprayer, you need six ounces per gallon of fluid here. So I've got a gallon and a half. So that would be nine ounces. So I shook this up a little already a little bit to mix it up here. Of course, this only goes up to eight ounces. So maybe I'll do six and three. And I can see as I'm doing this little drops going on the ground. So if I were on the grass, I would be killing things right now. So good thing I'm not. And maybe I'll just add an extra ounce. Make it a hot mix. Make sure I kill that stuff down to the root. All right. 
So I'm just gonna close this up, put the pump back on here. I've got my gallon and a half of water. I added my 10 ounces of Roundup mixture too. And also be careful, um, these Roundup come in all different concentrations. So you gotta really look at the label to see how much to add to your water. Um, because they've got small bottles that are super concentrated that you need like two tablespoons per gallon or something like that. So anyway, this one's kind of the medium grade stuff where you need some more of it. Um, normally I just buy whatever's on sale. So what I like to do is, is put the pump on here, and pump this thing up pretty good, get some pressure in it and then shake it. Otherwise it gets real foamy um, with a little bit of pressure in there. It seems like it prevents a lot of that foam from making. All right, so we've got that mixed up in our sprayer here. Now we're ready to go spray. See, so this next step is pretty easy. You just have to think about what are you trying to spray and what's beyond what you're trying to spray. So I would not recommend standing inside here and spraying like this. Obviously my overspray is gonna go onto the lawn and kill it. So I'm gonna stand on the outside and spray towards the inside. That way all my overspray will go towards the middle where there's nothing I'm worried about killing. All right, I'm all done with this already. So you can see there, I, I sprayed the actual plants, tried to cover the leaf basically with it. You don't really have to hose stuff down too bad with this, especially I mixed it a little bit hot. So um, I have no doubt this will this will take care of everything here. And also just use the gravel there to make sure I, um, for a guide on coverage to where it turned a wet color. Um, that way, anything that's just germinated in there, it'll get that too before it, uh, sprouts up but this area is done let's go onto that rock wall all right i've got this area all sprayed uh went down this uh, rock wall here um, if you do make a mistake and you spray something that you don't want to kill you do have a chance to save it. I would grab your hose or a bucket of water instantly as soon as you re realize you do it and um, try to wash it off the plant. And, and most times you'll be able to save it that way. So um, it is a product, like I said, deserves respect. You don't wanna just go willy nilly with it, but it's a great tool to have in your toolbox. Um, killed these plants down to the root, just pulling them out, you know, they'll come back time and time again doing that, so. Um, I try to minimize the use of it just because it is a chemical. I try to minimize those. Uh, but like I said, it's a good tool to have in the toolbox. Back at the fire pit here that I just sprayed probably 10 minutes ago. Um, the leaves are completely dry on these plants. Even the gravel is dried up. Like I said, it's pretty hot tonight. That is a great sign. That means that plant absorbed that glyphosate and uh, it's already probably starting to work. So we'll check back with this in a day or so and see uh, what kind of results we're getting. It is one day after using my glyphosate, my Roundup here, um, to work on these plants. You can see um, it's already working pretty good. You know, those plants are on their way out. So that's a success. They should be uh, kind of curled up and completely gone in, in a few days here. And even with this, um, I said it was gonna rain. It did end up raining a few hours later um, throughout the entire night mostly. So we got an inch and a half of rain basically. So it tested that, still worked. Um, the key is getting it out when it's hot and dry and that plant really sucks up that glyphosate and, and um, brings it inside and, 
and then it's game over. So hope you enjoy watching. Thanks for subscribing. Appreciate it. See you in the next one. Adios.